Uh, hi every, again, everybody. Unfortunately, we had some technical issues there with the internet, but we're, we're back now. So we were just finishing off the question of uh, the key things clients must do on their journey through. So uh, I was, you know, you were saying, you were talking about psychological assistance um, and, I, and I was saying, yeah, it can be quite confronting for people when they come into the multidisciplinary team that they've got a physical issue, but they end up with a, a pain specialist who's now sending them to a psychologist and they and and uh, they're, they're like, oh, well, are they saying it's just in my head? And it's a, it's a bit of a misunderstanding about the role of mental health in, in chronic pain or persistent pain. And, it, and it's so easy to arrive at those misunderstandings as well, I think. I think that um, even, even to seeing someone, you're in pain. So your ability to either express what you're experiencing um, well or to be able to understand what somebody else is saying is really challenged. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, I know for myself that, you know, short term memory, you know, concentration of things that are, as, as would be the case for anybody, if you've got a raging migraine, it's pretty hard just to have a normal conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and that's can be your permanent experience when you're in pain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for myself, it was, and, and hence why we only saw each other once face to face, because over the phone was much easier for me, because when yeah. it was poor, I could lie down. Yeah. You know, I could have that break. So even the process of getting into a car, getting in and out of a car, stopping at a set of lights and then going and sitting down was just beyond my ability to tolerate. So yeah. Yeah, I think that the absolutely the the mental health side of things, this is absolutely crucial. And I remember someone that I met um, as part of my journey, a, a gentleman, he was very large guy. You know, he was six foot six, 160 odd kilos. I'm six two and, and large myself. And both of us um, were subject to, to panic attacks, you know. So the fact that you've got these two enormous guys that would dwarf for any front rower in the country um, that were almost as meek and mild as a, as a mouse was quite confronting, you know, with the, how we're supposed to see ourselves from that sort of masculine perspective. So yeah. I think a, a huge centre point is just that acceptance, you know. And, and it's not a, a sign of weakness. It, it simply is nobody can go through chronic pain and persistent pain and not have to have mental health support. That's just not possible. Yeah, and that's one of the things I see more and more and, I, and I've started to do a little bit of research on is how closely, you know, there's panic attacks and finding it hard to be around other people in shopping centres, lots of lights and noise. It, it very much mirrors what post-traumatic stress disorder looks like. And of course, um, with post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, the threat is out there. It's, it's I've been attacked or I've been to war or, or something like that. But with chronic pain, the threat is pain itself. That's what we're responding to as, as the, threatening, the threatening thing that leads to the sense of being overwhelmed and, and the panic attacks, etc. And we're having this, that's right, this, this arm wrestle within ourselves, you know, that we're still trying to, our body is, is biological imperative is to limit pain and moves away from danger, you know, and the panic attacks can be that, it can be that pure fight or flight where the pain can just be so unreasoning that all you need to do is get out there. And I think, you know, that it's, it's almost, I mean, people can't understand that, you know, I think it's hard even for your immediate family to sort of appreciate that they, they become, they understand it more and more over time. Um, and, and I know people who were suffering and myself, I, I would struggle with people of more than four or five people at a time, um, you know, being out in dynamic environments. You yourself aren't particularly social because you're just wrecked with, wrecked with pain. <laughs> it's, um, it's pretty hard to, to perceive the nuance of communication and body language when you're just trying to survive and get through to the next stage. And that, that can be disappointing because you, you feel bad that you're not communicating very well. You know, so di digital communication has been huge for me. I've had very, very little face-to-face -face contact. Um, a lot of the my friends even found it quite confronting what it is that I've been going through. But I found that the digital communication has been an absolute lifesaver. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, my next question was about, you know, what have you gone through psychologically? And you know, you've covered a lot of that. But what have you found that to be helpful and unhelpful, say, on the on along the journey of of, of your mental health um, recovery? Look, I th yeah, it's a really interesting question and I've tended not to dwell a great deal on the negative side of things. I think, you know, I, I kept the diary in the early stages about, you know, what, you know, what I would eat, what medications I would have and how I would feel throughout the day. But I found that focusing on it too much almost made my experience of pain worse. You know, I wanted to try to distract myself from it. So I think um, 
for me, it's been, I've been very fortunate to have had the right support right from the beginning. So I think that um, it would have been incredibly difficult um, without that. But even those few months before, like I connected with yourself and a psychiatrist, uh, the big challenge was that I was, I just wasn't believed. You know, people just didn't believe in what your experience was. Um, and, and I think that you do need to accept that somewhat, that, you know, if, if people close to me, they're allowed to get frustrated at, at what the new circumstance is. It's not that they don't understand that, that they, well, one, they can't truly, they might have some acknowledgement, but they can't really understand what you experience. And I don't really show it, you know, so I, I try to tap out, but no one would have any idea. I'm even sitting here with you now that it, my pain is extraordinary. You know, it's, um, it's something that was sort of at a seven, eight out of 10 pain, but the, the cost of it is worth it to me. So um, I think that the, the most important thing is just to really keep going, acknowledge the fact that you can't, can't really do it well by yourself. Um, I, I feel really privileged now. I think my, my mental health is in a wonderful state. Um, I'm really in a nice little sweet spot. I mean, we relocated to North Queensland to improve my experience of pain. Um, you know, live in a house that's a one-story house is a reason for that. You know, all of the all of the things that we've been able to do to modify our lifestyle and, and things to, to uh, be beneficial for me. And really my journey now is is just to keep on plugging away and challenging my, you know, really arguing, just having an arm wrestle with pain. We don't always get on, my neck and I, um, but we sort of, we have a, a, a working relationship most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things that uh, I think is difficult is, you know, looking at you right now, I don't think people would know how much pain you're in. Um, so that's, that's really, really interesting. And, and you're kind of right to, it probably hasn't happened for a while, but you know, and probably because most of the people I see are plugged into the, the team that I work with, but you know, that not being believed by people is incredibly frustrating and stressful for people. And then once again, being, you know, unfortunately being uh, referred to the psychologist in amongst that sort of initially makes people go, well, hang on, you know, I'm, I'm doubly not being believed, but, you know, I, I, and this would be my advice to anybody that treats somebody with chronic pain is to believe them without question. Um, you know, if, they, if that's what they're coming to you for, they're in pain, you know, and that, that's one of the problems is if someone like yourself or other pain conditions such as complex regional pain syndrome and neuropathic pain elements and things like this, is most of us haven't experienced that pain. So we have no idea what it feels like and what, what the experience is. So, you know, we really have to trust the client and what they're telling us and believe it. It's very important. I think you, you get better with pain. I think it's quite interesting that when I'm at a stage now where I can almost view it as a third party, you know, even there'll, there'll be times like I'll, I'll have um, panic attacks rush through me for no reason once or twice a week, you know, so, mm -hmm. but you can just witness those. You can just, for whatever reason, because I'm always pushing myself, so there's always going to be consequences of those things. And you can just let it flow. You can just let it have its way and then it's going to get, get out on the other side. So, and I think, yeah, I can, I tend to be able to view my pain as almost like I'm separate to myself so that yes, I can go through that. Generally, you know, there will be peak pain where it's simply beyond my ability to tolerate that. Then that will just mean, you know, I'll handle it the best that I can. And then I'm just going to have to tap out for a while, just sure. hide in a room and, and do whatever I can until it, um, it starts to settle down. Sure. Sure. Uh, a client, he doesn't have chronic pain, he, he has um, PTSD, but um, he's kind of like you, he starts referring to his PTSD in a third party stage, he calls it Frank. Uh, Frank yeah. came to visit me today, you know, and I told Frank to come out from behind the, the wall so we could, we could, uh, you know, I could challenge him face to face, you know, things like that. And I thought it was a really interesting way of doing things. It was actually quite beneficial for him actually. So yeah, interesting. So there's this concept of uh, everyday drills, which I've written down here, which I, I picked up from a, a softball coach in the United States who at colleges, they can only train um, their athletes for a certain period of time every day. So they kind of leave the athletes to do some of the, the, the practice themselves. And so he called it everyday drills. You know, these are things that as an athlete, you have to do every day just to at least maintain your level of skill. So what, what would be the things that you need to do every day? What are your everyday, um, everyday drills to manage your pain so you can get on with your life despite your pain? 
um, within normal life, you know, it was I was very passionate about and insistent um, because it just makes it makes you have a get rest, you move forward, you know. So it's just very easy to to just hide. You could just hide in a room and, and not face anything. So I think, um, and I always try to set myself a couple of things that I just have to get done that day. So whether it's trying to, you know, put the washing on, um, you know, whatever it is, trying, having to bake bread. Bake bread is a constant. That's something that's always going to constantly be there. But mm-hmm. I always little tasks that I'm trying to complete. Um, contributing on LinkedIn, you know, having some sort of good conversations. I've often mentored um, people myself. Um, within the the hospitality realm just to feel like some sort of ongoing contribution. So um, a lot of it for me, there'll be some small physiological element, but it, it's really important for me to be able to keep active mentally. Yeah. And and as ongoing, I just have to have a project. So I've, I've noticed and learned from myself that I really struggle if I don't have a project. Yeah. So whatever that might be, whether that was, you know, writing the story in the first place or, you know, whatever it might be for now, Project of mine would be to understand better what mental health services there are that are, that are available um, for the hospitality realm and to be able to contribute my story. So that, that's something that just keeps me going. So being able to just, you know, keep on plugging away at a couple of projects at a time is something that's just a constant for me. I, sure. If I'm just left to it, it, it just allows you to blur the pain a little bit more, you know, be distanced from it a bit. So it's really important. Sure. Is there any physical exercises with regimes you go through or diaphragmatic breathing or any sort of um, mindfulness or meditation that you might go through? I've never been a, a massive meditator, but um, I really enjoy music. So I've, I've found um, just that ability to sort of park your brain just to be able to, and whether it's the unselfing and just, you know, walking around the yard or, or feeling those sensations, I think, which has a, is a form of the meditation. So just really trying to look at those experiences. Um, big thing for me, I guess, partly is that it's just that silliness. You're just making sure that the kids are laughing every day um, and that we, we have that sort of that crazy silliness is a big part of what my, my days are built around, you know. Um, I generally need to move. It's been more difficult um, with the, the restrictions that we're all currently living under and, and not being able to get to a gym. I've found parts of my body, if I can move them or strengthen them, they just help me with my functionality and my overall experience of pain. Um, so trying to just maintain some sort of movement and stretching and those sorts of things has been yeah. has been important as well. I mean, everything's going to hurt. That's just the way that it is. But there's just some pain helps build towards tolerance, which just... I, I don't have, I don't tend to have good days, but it's about having not having the bottom fall out from underneath you, you know, having better having more of the, the not disastrous days. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm hearing, you know, it's scratching and crawling the best you possibly can, you know, an inch, two inches forward at least every day psychologically and physiologically. Yeah, and, and you'll go backwards too, right? Well, that's just the nature of, of the beast and the it, and life life is just dynamic. It just the way that it is. So that's that's that why that sort of sense of pacing and that there's just never going to be a constant improvement. It just yep. won't happen. Yep. But just having that refusal to to give in and just to keep on finding those really good ingredients, those those powerful influences that can. You know, I know for my exercise physiologist up here in Townsville, um, Jacinta, absolutely world class, and she's changed. She's changed my life. Just been the right person that I've needed to be able to to meet at the right time and and was the only person that's been able to really address, because um, I've got a compressed nerve as well in my neck, she's been able to help rebuild my upper back that's helped to alleviate and reduce some of that pain. So, and just again, it's, I, I found a bit of a, a drop off and a struggle when I'm not talking with or meeting with people constantly, because when you do have that team around you, you do have this understanding and this, this story that's unfolding. When you don't have that, you don't have that sort of common um, experience of people that really truly understand what you're doing and, and how you're improving. Sure. So that's been a little bit, a little bit different, um, difficult. Um, but that I think the, you know, writing is something that sort of helped me and um, sort of come to terms with that and just keep that motivation forward. Yeah. For me, it's just every day I'm thankful for what I have. It's whilst it kind of sucks, it's much better than the alternative because um, many would argue that I shouldn't be alive with what I experienced. So, 
sure. um, every day above ground is a good day, right? And, yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the things we kind of discussed uh, before we even hit record was that, you know, your pain, you know, pacing is sort of difficult for you to get into because your pain is probably permanent, you know, um, and whereas pacing might be certainly more beneficial for those where there is an end in sight, perhaps, or, um, you know, so. Didn't yeah, want to poo -poo. Didn't want to poo poo pacing completely. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, and, and that's right. I mean, I, I can only sort of talk from my experience with, yeah. with I have, but that's right. I mean, I, I describe for people my my pain is a is a migraine level of pain every moment, all day, every day. You know, I I wake up in very very high level of pain and, and end the day in a very very high level of pain. Yeah. So my 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 good days are the are a level of pain that would bring you home from work <laughs> because it was too painful as a migraine. You know, yeah, yeah. but it's um. For me, I just I'm just trying to build up those tolerances and and build up the the, the scars and and just keep on fighting and keep moving forward. And sure. if I can, you know, if my story can can change someone's experience or if it can be beneficial in any way, that that just comes back to me. That only helps me in my experience of pain as well. Sure. And mate, that comes to sort of the end of most of my questions. But um, was there anything else you wanted to add? I think just as an overall and I suppose a summary, I mean, please people go and check out the story. It might be something that they might find beneficial, um, available, I fly available on Amazon. Um, the big thing for me is, is just don't give up. Just keep going, you know, just, just patience, persistence, and just never stop. Just keep going. Cause there is my, my greatest drive is that I'm determined to make this the best thing that's ever happened to me. So, you know, there's very few times where you get to just move out of life and be stuck in your own head and get to rebuild it the way that you can. And even though it might be in an adjusted reality, um, I just refuse to be, as, it, as the story says, I'm, I'm unbroken. I just, I refuse to stay. I can't be fixed, but I'm, I'm, I choose to be unbroken. Absolutely. And you've always had that, that mindset from the first moment that I met you is, you know, you're not going to be part of my team if you're going to be uh, not interested or holding me back. So... You know, you've kind of demanded that excellence from everybody that's working, that's been working with you. So that's, I see that as a real strength uh, of you as well. So I appreciate that. So mate, uh, we come to the end. Um, so hopefully everybody finds this, uh, this quite helpful. Um, thank you very much for being involved, mate, and uh, being so open about your story. And uh, it's been a, a pleasure to talk to you. And I think, you know, and I hope that it's been, it's going to be extremely beneficial to other people who are going through persistent and chronic pain in their lives as well. No, I appreciate it, Damien. It's, um, it's just become a thing, as I mentioned, it's my project now. It's really important for me to be able to contribute. And, and there's, I felt there was just so many things that I experienced that were unnecessary. And I've also been very fortunate to have found people like yourself and, and just, you know, a terrific team to be built around me. And I know that that's not often the case. So yeah. if, if, if my journey can just help someone in some um, shape, way, shape or form, then that would just mean the world to me. Yeah. And I, I agree. It's, it's been recently, it's something that I really sort of focused on when clients are sort of potentially just been floundering around a little bit, you know, not, not really moving forward and all of a sudden get plugged into a team of, people who who work with pain every day and it, it makes an enormous dis difference to them even if their pain doesn't improve they 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 usually say that their experience of life improves you know by working with people who understand and, and get it and believe them you know absolutely and that and that is probably the key take home i think um for anybody that, that watches this with pain is that even though that the pain might not change the, the what else happens in your psychology can just have such an incredibly positive experience um, impact on your experience of life yeah and that that's really where where the sucker is that really is where the support is so just to just to embrace that all right mate thank you very much we'll hit stop there and um good luck with the book thanks mate cheers see ya